Hi, Kate. How are you? Are you all right? Good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. It's good to see you again. We, the last time we spoke was April 2020. How's, uh, how's everything been? How's the new academic year going? Um, yeah, so uh, good. Um, we've had to make adjustments, obviously, with the library, as I'm sure a lot of people have. Um, so instead of the students coming to choose freely in the library now, we uh, have a whole online ordering system. So I'm a bit like Amazon these days and I have to go and deliver the books in the morning. Yeah. Um, I've got a little trolley. So I carry all the books that people have ordered around on there and collect in the other ones um, so that they can then be quarantined for two weeks. So, yeah, we've had to make a few adjustments in that department so, as well, many others. Of course. So there's a lot of new health and safety logistics that have been introduced to the library yeah. in this new academic year. Wonderful. Mm. Okay, that's good. So with regards to the, the article you, uh, you helped write for us back in uh, April last year, uh, you spoke about the Renaissance solutions the school currently has uh, with regards to Accelerated Reader and Star Reading specifically. Uh, have, have you used Accelerated Reader in the new academic year since you guys have been back? Uh, we are still using it. So originally, we before we had Accelerated Reader, we were just... I mean, do you want me to sort of start there? Please do, okay. yeah. Okay. So um, when before we had it, we we knew obviously how important reading is in terms of um, improving, um, you know, attainment across all the whole curriculum, not just in terms of English and things, but for everything in terms of success. So we, we knew it was important to get everybody reading, um, but it was really difficult to kind of monitor whether people were reading. The only way to do it was to, to keep an eye on what books they had and encourage them to have a reading book. And then I think I met with them once, you know, whenever I could, which wasn't very often when you've got to get through all the students, um, to discuss what they're reading and make notes about, you know, what they said and decide whether we thought they really were reading it or, or not. Sure. Um, because obviously sometimes people sort of said they were reading when they weren't. Um, so we were looking for some way to get a better... Uh, hold on that to, to know whether people were reading and to me, you know, measure progress and stuff like that. So we got, um, it was the head of English that um, suggested we got Accelerated Reader, which we got seven years ago. Um, and as soon as we had it, it was just, it made all that stuff much easier because obviously you know who's reading and who isn't because of the book quizzes. Um, and, uh, you know, you set the, um, everybody's got their target and, um, you know, do they meet it or not? Um, you can measure it like that. And we do the star reading tests at the start of each term. And I think we might do one at the end of each term as well, just to kind of see, engage people's progress and stuff like that. Um, so we mostly, you know, those that's really the part of it that we make most use of, the star part and the diagnostic test, which we send home with reports so that um, parents are aware of sort of where students are at with their reading. Um, and then... Yeah, we take termly targets very seriously. In fact, we have half termly targets and then termly targets towards the end of the year. Um, and students have to meet those. And those who meet them get a little certificate. Um, and we take a picture of everybody who met their um, target. But we also have a number of other ways that we kind of improve engagement with that across the school. Um, so, yeah, we've continued to use Accelerated Reader in exactly the same way as we always have done um, this year and just even add a few more twist to it of course good that's wonderful and we we you sent us a picture kate for your article last year and there was uh, some great photos of the students holding up their certificates and that was wonderful to see but yeah well also also we do uh, an event called we it used to be called the pizza park yeah but now we call it the accelerated reading cake, cake break <laughs> uh, because we had to move from lunchtime for logistical reasons um but uh um yeah, so basically that's a, a sort of form group task. And uh, the, the form group that have the most students reach their target wins a little party like cake and music for each um, term. So that's another way we get kind of everyone talking about it because um, obviously form tutors, they receive an update every week of what the standings are, who's got their target and who hasn't, and they sort of have a chat with the students about that and, you know, encourage those who need a bit of encouragement and stuff so that's another thing we like to do just to kind of get the um you know just that's what's created i think the big shift in the sort of culture here at school um in terms of valuing 
reading and everybody getting excited about it. And um, yeah, and I think that's what's earned our school the reputation kind of locally anyway, as being a school where the students, you know, where there is a good culture of reading. Of um, and yeah. definitely when uh, we do tours of the school, which we do, you know, all the time for prospective students, um, the admin, you know, bring the, the parents up to our library and talk about Accelerated Reader and everything because it's a selling point for us for the school. Yeah, of course. Wonderful. So, Kate, in your article, uh, you you told us that you the reason the school um, were interested in investing in and bringing uh, Accelerated Reader and Star Reading on board and, and utilising it properly, one of the reasons was you said the school needed data that was simple to understand and quick to access. Is that what you get? Do you still get that with, I'm thinking more specifically with Star Reading? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, and, and obviously the more you use it, the easier it gets because, you know, you know everything that you need and you know what information you want to look at. And from what I've seen, uh, we do, yeah, the diagnostic tests, the ones that we get back most sort of to show us and reading age is what people get excited about. But I think there's a lot more information on there as well that the teachers are able to use. Um, and we also do the the report where it shows the change um, in reading age and stuff like that. Of course. Um, and we use, yeah, I download the target histories every week. That's how I run my competitions. But we also do the word count um, because we reward word millionaires when people reach a million words. Yeah. So we put them on a big display and stuff like that. We've actually got a few... I think we've got double and triple millionaires actually already this year. Yeah. Good. Wonderful. Yeah. And Kate, uh, is it useful for staff as well, for, for staff across the, the English department and across the school to see the data in a report, in a star reading report? Uh, like you said, not just the, the reading age, but the more com- complex details like the ZBD scores or just be, to be able to compare term on term, year on year growth. Is it accessed and utilised by other staff? Um, yeah, well, definitely the heads of year, the head the deputy head, they all have um, access. They have accounts. I think they discuss with people um, in parent meetings and things like that. Um, yeah, and and like I said, form tutors are, are kept up to date with kind of what's happening, where people are with that. Um, I think we had something in book week as well where we did, oh, yeah, we, we did trophies for biggest jumps in reading age as well. Because sure. um, we kind of we were thinking of all the different ways we could reward because you know you don't want to end up just rewarding the kids who are bookworms or you know who are really able you know you want you want to reward those kids who are kind of like um, have started at a, a quite low point yeah and managed to make a big increase even though maybe that's not that high you know for for the school it's high for them. So we're kind of like looking for ways to, and so we use all that data for for that as well. Wonderful, good. That sounds like the school is utilising the data properly and how it should be used. So, Kate, you, you referenced earlier there that there's a lot of celebration now with regards to reading. You you have a you have a, a cake party to share success, and you, you pass out certificates, and you share word millionaires, which you're seeing more of, which is brilliant. Um, what are you seeing? What what are you seeing in the students, Kate? How are they? How, how, how can you see a change in their enthusiasm around reading? I think the thing, like we were talking about it this morning, actually I was reflecting on it with the sixth form because they don't, um, they don't do it anymore. Yeah. Uh, we graduate people out of Accelerated... I mean, I don't know what everyone else does, but we graduate everyone out of Accelerated Reader at year in the, after the first term of year 11. Yeah. Um, so they sort of have to... They have to reach their target that term and they, you know, then they graduate, you know, out of it. Um, uh, and actually, you know, those older students don't borrow books, uh, anything like the frequency or, or, or read as much as the younger ones. So that's, yeah. what shows, you know, the younger ones are doing the reading because they're on the, the scheme. Um, and the sixth form, we're talking about it and we were kind of saying the good thing about it. One of the really good things about being using accelerated reader is that there's a lot of choice. Um, you know, it's not it's not about a teacher telling you read this. Yeah. Um, it's about you've got the levels, you know, to read your ZPD. Um, and some of the teachers 
want the kids to, you know, read at the top of their ZPD. They've decided, oh, they should be reading at the top because, you know, I want to, them to push themselves. But other teachers are like, well, just whatever you're enjoying as long as it's there in the in the ZPD. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you have a lot of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? What's that word for choice? Autonomy, I guess, yeah. in, in what you choose to read because you can choose anywhere in that level. And we've got, we're lucky, we've got a lot of books and I, I, lead, I, I add to it every year. Yeah. Um, yeah, and obviously, you know, so we've probably got. Uh, I think we've probably got about. I haven't done a count lately, but I think we might have about six thousand, maybe more. Um, wow. Our titles, but I mean, obviously, there's loads. So yeah. I think, yeah, the students like that that they can choose and they can. Um, but I think you know you need someone. That's where the importance of kind of you know sorry, but good librarians does come in because you can. You know that that's helpful to have somebody there who says, "Okay, so what was the last thing you liked? Maybe you'd like this." But if I get really stuck or they don't want to engage with me, I tend to say, "Bring a friend. You know, yeah. bring a friend with you and decide together. Like, get them to recommend some things." Of course, yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, people. We we have we have a breakfast book club as well, which is for the able. Well, not able, the the avid, shall yeah. we say, avid readers. So I I use AR to choose the top twenty reads in terms of word count from each year group yeah um, and I invite them to the breakfast book club and then we sort of choose between us different things we want to read and we meet kind of a month later and discuss it and I do that with year six seven eight nine and ten yeah um and yeah I've actually got there's more people in that now than there used to be you know you used to some people would come um, and others would just kind of think it was dorky and not come. <laughs> but, course, now, yeah. but now everybody comes. So um, there's that. Good. So there is a, a more enthusiasm around uh, reading and wanting to get involved, which is good to see. Okay, let's quickly touch on the ZBD score because we've, we've referenced that a couple of times already. Okay. And for, for those who don't know, the ZBD score stands for Zone of Proximal Development. And it is essentially a scale, to, uh, a scale that each, each pupil or student will receive after they finish uh, a star reading assessment. And the more uh, accelerated reading really quizzes they carry out in between assessments, so the more formative side of the assessment. It will really the program will really hone in on what their 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 scale is based on the amount of the difficulty of the book's content and the number of words in the book on the number of words in the book. So that when they can approach the library, if there are ZBD labels, if there are AR book labels in the library, they know which books uh, are more accessible for them. Have you seen that, um, Kate? Has the library become more accessible with uh, AR book labels, or or just yeah. students being aware of their ZBD scores? Yeah. It's, it's hard for me to imagine the time before it now, really, but we did, we rearranged everything. So uh, it was in author, whatever the sort of standard thing is, which I think is author um, yeah. surname, yeah. A to Z. Um, but we've, uh, we rearranged all of our uh, fiction area into um, AR order when we brought the system in. Yeah. Um, so we, you know, so it's, so we, ch- yes, you just go to where your ZPD is and you choose sort of, in there of course. and I think that's better for them because otherwise you know otherwise what are they searching for and I mean if the if the, if they then say well I like this author and okay it might be slightly a pain that all that author's books aren't there together it's pretty easy to find the author's other books because you can use um mm. the, all our students know how to use the um, the AR to search for books, you know? Yeah, of course. They yeah. search for it. <clears throat> Using the book finder, yeah. Using the book finder, exactly. They go <clears throat> on there, then they find the the number and they go and find it in the number. If Great. it's there, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. But yeah, that's what we do. So we've got the orange stickers um, and everything. We just sort of label it like that and, and stack it in that order. And I think, and also that's made it easier with having to do it online because um, I've made... I downloaded from now. Is it a book guide? You know the yeah. bit where you list all your yeah. That's so all the too. library collections is we've created a book list in a R book guide, and we downloaded it as an Excel spreadsheet, and that is what we use or what the students use to choose their next book. 
So they go to their level, they look at all the books in there, and it's quite good because it even downloaded a little um, description, like a, you know, a little blurb for each Oh, book. great. Good. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> That's good. Mm. Wonderful. So let's talk about, let's focus on accelerated reader quizzes just for a minute, because obviously this is the main crux of, of, of what the reading program does. This is how hopefully we're keeping students uh, motivated uh, and enthused to want to keep reading and, and develop their reading. But of course, the emphasis always being on reading for pleasure. So as we know, with accelerated reading quizzes, the, the questions are computer adaptive, which means uh, if a child is, is, if a student is carrying out a quiz on the, the last book they read, they get a question wrong, then the questions get easier. And if they get a question correct, the questions will get more challenging. So by the end of the quiz, you've got a real uh, good sense of, of how much they're progressing. Um, so Kate, from what you've seen um, and from how the pupils use the Accelerated Reader Programme and how they carry out their quizzes, is there a lot of self-motivation in there? To, uh, you know, are they, are they, uh, is it keeping them encouraged to want to read more and want to, to do so, better? Yeah, I mean, we, we sort of have to, we run quite a tight ship with when the quizzes are done. We don't just allow kind of free access to them. Yeah. Um, because we were... Yeah. You know, once the system was actually in place and embedded, obviously students, some students started thinking of ways to help each other with quizzes or whatever. Yeah. So we do actually have it that they have to come to me in the library um, and do the quiz. Um, but now that that's that sort of, that now that they know that's the way it is, that's what they do just automatically, you know. So as soon as they finish the book, they come along and, um, you know, and do their quiz with me there. Um, uh yeah, I mean, I think they they sort of think about it in terms of their target and stuff. And some of them, you know, they love just like getting their target and then going way beyond. We've actually had um, people get over a thousand percent of their target before. Amazing. Yeah. Brilliant. So people like that, because what we do is when we give out the certificates, we do them in like order. So we do the, the hundreds first and then we go yeah. like up. And they get quite excited about who's going to have the top number, especially mm -hmm. if it's sort of like 600 or 1,000 percent or something. And that person gets to stand in the front and gets bragging rights. Yeah, of course. Brilliant. <laughs> That's what we want to see. Um, so just touching on star reading then quickly, we discussed some of the reports earlier. We touched on the diagnostic report. We touched on the growth report and the fact that essentially what the reports give staff is a comparison of term to term on term, year on year growth that each student is seeing or each class of students or even a group of students. Mm -hmm. So one of the most one of the most visual things you'll see in, in the star reading reports, of course, is the at benchmark uh, bar. Mm -hmm. And it will let you know if they're um, meeting their targets or if they're below benchmark or if they're in need of urgent intervention. So from your experience, Kate, referring to those reports, being able to identify students who are in need of urgent intervention, uh, has this helped you develop plans, develop subsequent uh, learning activities to help get the child out of urgent intervention and get them reading at a, an appropriate level? Yeah, I think so. I mean, we've got we've got an SEN department um, and they make use of those things a lot, obviously, in their work. Sure. Um, and I think people are referred to them um you know remedially for that as well but we also have um reading club which is different to the thing i mentioned before which is a book club yeah um, we have a club at lunchtime for the people who uh are sort of struggling i don't like that word but you know what i mean who need yeah. a bit of, uh, extra support with their reading of course and we have sen members of staff who run that yeah, um, yeah. And they sort of use, yeah, the data to identify who needs to be in there. Um, and then they also kind of work with them to to work out better book choices for them. So we have to have what we've done recently. Well, I've spoken to them a lot about what kind of books they think we need to get for those students. Um, and so, you know, we've we've invested in quite a lot of books that are like, um, like the content is a bit more mature, but the level is low. So that they're not having to read like Topsy and Tim when they're 14. But like we also have to uh, account for um, the fact that most of our students are second language. Mm -hmm. I think 80% 80, 80 or something of the, of, the, of the students here are second language. So they're not, they're not even, 
native English speakers. Of course. Um, for that, we have to kind of take lots of different factors into account, whether they've got difficulty or whether it's to do with language and stuff like that. So I think the teachers do use that a lot. And they also take a lot of that data into um, senior management meetings. Mm-hmm. So they kind of get, get invited in um, regularly to sort of review that and to show the progress and stuff like that. And I think our figures in terms of like helping people at the bottom end improve and pushing those ones at the top are, have been you know really getting a lot better. Excellent. Good. And that was actually going to be my next question, Kate. I was going to ask who those reports, that data information you, you get from star reading assessments, who do you share that with? What stakeholders, governors, senior leadership team? But evidently there are there are meetings where that information is shared. Yeah, yeah. So senior senior management team, senior leadership team is, you know, they, they look at it as well. And then it will I think quite regularly um we have a kind of like English literacy type review in the actual SMT meeting. Definitely yeah. several, several times a year and that information goes in there. Um, mm-hmm. And like I said, it goes to parents. The diagnostic yeah. reports go to parents as well. Of course. And hopefully that helps to facilitate a, a better conversation with parents around the child's or the student's current level of reading and their rate of growth. Yeah. And it's nice to have actual um, statistics and figures rather than an impression. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's not an anecdotal uh, yeah. assessment. It's 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 on paper. Yeah. Good, wonderful, Kate. Kate, I'm conscious of the time because I know you've got uh, lunch duty in five minutes. Yeah. So if, if we, we want to r- wrap it up, just describe just briefly your overall experience with Accelerated Reader Star Reading from your perspective in your in your role at the school, and then just if you want to touch on how you're gonna you know how you intend to use the programs for the rest of the academic year and going forward. Um, yeah, I mean, I just think it's really, um, you know, brought a lot to the school in terms of all the things we've already discussed, but also, yeah, just allowing us to celebrate reading and celebrate readers and, you know, just find new ways to kind of encourage and make things fun and kind of keep it at the forefront. Um, like I said, we always have a book week every year and, you know, it's really nice to be able to use the information that we get from there to do a few trophies or do competitions and things like that. Um, and yeah, I think I, I like the library being organized that way. Um, it makes my life easier because I know if something's going to be too hard for someone and also being able to use the, you know, you know, that it says sort of middle years, upper years, you know, it gives you the, what age yeah. it's suitable for. That's really useful too. Um, especially if you know you you, you haven't because how can you read everything on the shelf you can't of course, so, of course. So you don't and you don't want to give someone something that's going to be really inappropriate for them um so yeah those are also really useful I forgot about that um and yeah in terms of organizing the library and keeping a list of the books we have um it's really great to have the AR book guide as a tool and yeah I mean I, it's difficult for me to remember what it was like without it it's so kind of embedded in our um culture now and yeah um yeah. in terms of what i intend to do in the future I, I haven't thought of anything new yet but i'm sure i'll get there of course yeah absolutely <laughs> and and as you know renaissance always on hand whether it's a coaching team whether it's one of your account managers oh, or that's true too yeah I should mention that. that's yeah. very useful being able to click on that little thing in the corner and do a what do you call that like a live chat web live, chat live support yeah yeah, that's really useful. Every time yeah. we've kind of had a problem or whatever, we've been able to get someone straight away on there. So, yeah, that's great, too. Good. That's wonderful to hear. And just really super finally, Kate, from your perspective, uh, working in an international school, is Accelerated Reader and Star Reading, are they appropriate um, ed tech solutions for an international school? In other words, like you mentioned earlier, you've got a high demographic of English second language students um, and therefore... Does uh, Accelerated Reader and Star Reading do everything you need them to do? Yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I can't kind of, obviously this is the only setting in which I've used it. Of course. Yeah, yeah. I think it is because it is difficult otherwise to get, um, to work out a kind of appropriate level of book to give um, to some second language speakers. So being able to do that, and I'm, I'm watching some at the moment actually who who've started out with a very, very low level of English or, you know, or very low ability, who are really kind of like moving through, you know, you watch them kind of moving up the levels and stuff. So, yeah, no, it's really, really useful in that way. Okay, thank you so much for your time today. Okay, no worries.
My pleasure. See nice you soon. To you. Yeah. yeah, nice to speak to you. See you soon. Take Bye. care. Bye. If you enjoyed this episode of the Renaissance Space podcast, please check out the Education Joining the Dots podcast from our colleagues at GL Assessment. Thank you.